Yeah, and uh, can give you this virtual microphone and uh, wish all of you a great event, great meeting. I hope it will be great. Thank you. I hope it will be great also. <laughs> so thank you all for coming and for your donations. Um, I think this is a great thing. Um, so thank you, Deanna, for uh, putting this together. Uh, I just think this is awesome that you're doing this. Um, and let me get my screen shared here and we can get going. Um, so yeah, I'm so excited to talk with you all about Remix. That's the thing that I have been really into um, over the last um, about year. And uh, I'm just gonna really quickly run you through um, why Remix is such a big deal to me. And then we'll get into some demo and we'll have some uh, Q&A at the end. So feel free to, uh, to ask questions as, uh, as we go and I can get to those questions when we get to the end. Um, so uh, yeah, just to, to get us started, um, I'm gonna talk about how I got into Remix. Um, so Ryan and Michael were building, uh, they're the creators of React Router and they were building Remix um, to, actually they were trying to, to build something else and they needed a, a React framework that they wanted to use um, for, uh, for what they were creating. Sorry, my microphone just keeps on falling down. <laughs> Hopefully you can hear me okay. Um, I can hear you. Okay, good. Okay, good. Uh, it's just like now it's falling on my keyboard, so I'll just move my keyboard over. So what the heck? Got to tighten some screws, I think. Uh, so Ryan and Michael were working on uh, on something, and uh, they decided to build a framework uh, for that. And they really liked the framework, so they showed it to me, and I was really impressed. And so when it it was uh, released as a developer preview thing, um, I decided to to try it out. And at the time, my website looked like this. Uh, this was built with Gatsby. It was using static site generation, uh, you know, the latest and greatest from the Jamstack uh, sort of thing. It was hosted on Netlify. Um, but I had a couple of pain points. Uh, one of the uh, pain points was that uh, my builds took a really long time because it had to generate all of the pages. And I have a lot of pages on my website. Um, my, my website is not your typical developer portfolio. I do have a blog with hundreds of blog posts. Um, but I also list all of my workshops. I have several seasons of podcasts um, and several other pages. So I, I think I have somewhere around maybe 300 pages on this website um, and lots of images and stuff too that uh, just was a real problem with static site generation. And because of uh, static site generation and the way that it works, if I needed to make any change to the content, I had to rebuild my whole site. And uh, that took just an exceedingly long amount of time. Um, and there are uh, newer um, solutions to these problems, but all of them are vendor specific. They're not really using uh, features of the web that I want them to. <laughs> um, and, uh, and so there, there's a lot of vendor lock-in in using some of those solutions. And on top of that, those solutions can only get you so far. Uh, if you need to make a change to content that appears on every page, then you're right back to rebuilding every page. Um, and so there are scaling issues that I had with static site generation. Um, and then the other issue that I had was um, uh, having any data that needed to be more real time um, was a problem because um, as the, um, the build took such a long time to, to load or, or to, to happen, um, I, I, like, I would have a, a data change, an update, and have to rebuild the whole site and it would take a long time. And by the time the site was done, it had to trigger another build because it was already out of date. Specifically, I'm talking about my workshops page where I wanted to show uh, what workshops I have available. And if you watch closely, when I hit refresh, you get this loading workshop details thing that pops into place. Um, and that's because I, I wanted to uh, go to the Tito API and find out what um, whether there was a scheduled workshop for this particular workshop so that people could buy tickets uh, and if there was a, a discount and all of that stuff. And, um, and so that's what you're kind of forced to do when you're using static site generation is you have to um, make these requests in the browser, um, or you have to rebuild the whole site. And I just, I couldn't rebuild the whole site. Uh, it wasn't actually good for performance either because it would trigger a, a cache invalidation of everything. Um, and so it's static site generation, it, it promised a lot, but it did not deliver, uh, at least for 90% um, of the use cases of the web. 
And so um, I realized that I would kind of forced myself into this box and trying to poke outside of the box led to bad user experiences. Uh, and it's not just me either. Uh, so YouTube does something similar. Um, the problem is that with, with YouTube, they, um, they can't really give you much uh, useful uh, information until the JavaScript is loaded. And so when you go to YouTube, uh, I actually experienced this problem like uh, firsthand as a user of YouTube. I didn't like go searching around for examples of this problem. I was just using YouTube and I ran into this issue. Um, and so the issue was if you, uh, and we're gonna slow it down to 3G so we can talk about it as it's happening. But if you go to youtube.com, the first thing that it sends to you is a uh, HTML document with a bunch of skeleton UI uh, that does not look good at all. Uh, and while it's, um, what it's doing is it's downloading this desktop Polymer uh, file that is very large. And uh, all it can show you that whole time while you're waiting is the skeleton UI that doesn't uh, do anything. And in fact, it doesn't even have the search input, which is what I was trying to accomplish when I experienced this bug. Um, or I guess it's not really a bug, it's just how it's designed, um, but this poor user experience was I was trying to search for something. And so we're waiting for this desktop Polymer uh, thing to download when it finally does and I try to search, my search doesn't work. I can type in the search input, I hit enter and it, it gets cleared. Uh, that is not what I want. I want to perform a search and the web knows how to, how to handle forms, but um, we have to actually wait for this base.js file to download before it actually can download all of the interactivity and the um, the uh, stuff that makes YouTube work. Um, and it's it was frustrating for me as a user to type in my search query, hit enter, and have it all just be cleared. Um, only to finally, when the JavaScript is downloaded, I can do my search, and uh, and it does basically what a form does. It updates the URL with a search param uh, with the value of what I searched. So um, what's frustrating to me is that the web knows how to do this already. Um, and so I could have done my search right from the beginning if they just rendered a form um, with a, an input and I could have typed my search and hit enter. And uh, the browser knows how to handle that. It will update the URL for me and everything. Um, and so this is the difference between progressive enhancement and using JavaScript to enable an experience. Um, so YouTube is absolutely 100% the type of a, a web experience that uh, doesn't need JavaScript at all, frankly. Um, it, the entire thing could be done without JavaScript. Um, and then, uh, so you could have a baseline of a functional app, and then you could enhance that app um, by adding JavaScript uh, functionality to it. Um, so you can use JavaScript to enhance the experience, not just enable it. And, um, and so this is something that um, is a part of what Remix is trying to do, is it's trying to get rid of all of these loading spinners, um, trying to uh, leverage progressive enhancement to give users a baseline awesome experience, and then use JavaScript to enhance that experience to make it better. Because of course, YouTube uh, without JavaScript would not be uh, as like dynamic and interactive uh, experience as it is. And so we do like JavaScript. We want to keep the JavaScript on the, in the browser. But it'd be really cool if we could make an app that works before the JavaScript finishes loading. Uh, and that's one of the things that, that Remix is capable of doing. So for uh, the reasons that I, like, I described earlier, I decided to rewrite my website using Remix. And I realized a couple of really cool things. Uh, for one, I realized that um, I, I could have a completely server rendered application that ran just as fast as my static site generated site um, could run. So uh, I, I can go to any of these blog posts. The loading times are super fast. Um, I, I don't have any problem with uh, like from a performance perspective. But what's really interesting is every one of these pages uh, has to go to my server to uh, go get the data for it. So I don't have uh, like these pages aren't server uh, generated uh, at build time and put on a CDN or anything. These are actually talking to my origin server to go get all of this data. And I, um, I think that's really interesting that I'm able to make such a fast experience uh, despite having to go get um, data. Whereas on my old site, I could um, it was all just HTML files on a CDN. So um, additionally, when I realized that I could make it just as fast, I also realized that because they're going to my server, I can give them dynamic data from like, uh, like from their request. And so if we go to the blog, you'll notice that we have this um, rankings here. This is actually 
uh, ranking the uh, users who have read my blog posts and what team that they're on. So when, uh, when you sign up for an account on my website, you can choose a team that you wanna be a part of and the blog posts that you read, as you read those, they will be counted as a point for your team. And so then uh, the yellow team is winning right now. And so um, all of the like links throughout the site and everything are gonna be styled as yellow. Um, if you go to a blog post that um, is in like where red is in control, then uh, all the links will be red. And so it just kind of is it um, enhances the experience a little bit um, doing something that I never could have done with static site generation because this would have had to be a spinner. And I would have just been like, yeah, no, that's not a good user experience. I'm not even going to bother with this fun little feature. Uh, and so, yeah, being able to, to keep track of the blog posts that you've read. Additionally, every time you uh, go to one of these blog posts at the bottom, you're going to find a uh, list of suggestions for other blog posts that you might be interested in. And because I'm keeping track of the blog posts that you've read, I can suggest only blog posts you haven't read yet. Uh, and every time you refresh this page, those are going to be new blog posts. And so um, we can, I, I actually can't use HTTP caching because every page is different for every user. And, um, and so there's no HTTP caching going on here, but it's still really fast. And so I can give a really awesome user experience without having to make all the trade-offs that you make with static site generation, where this would have to be some sort of loading spinner or something um, if I wanted to use static site generation. So um, I, I was just blown away by how fast Remix is uh, from a user's perspective and how effective I was as a developer using it um, to and create even more than what I'd originally scoped for the site. In fact, I even added a brand new podcast where you can call in and record a question or something, and then I can record my response, and that gets turned into uh, a podcast episode uh, here, which I think is pretty sweet. And um, these are also all routed, and I have animated routes, which I'd never done before, and it's actually really, really easy with Remix uh, because of nested routing, which we'll talk about a little bit. So anyway, that uh, I built my site with Remix. I was blown away. I basically decided I wanted to change this entire courses page to just be a bunch of courses about Remix because um, all I wanted to do was teach people Remix because my goal is to help make um, uh, help people make the world a better place through quality software by teaching people how to make quality software. And so I realized, well, the best way for me to do that is to teach them how to build Remix sites. And so in talking with the Remix team, we decided that it, I'd be more effective at doing that by joining the Remix team. And so I did, uh, I joined as the developer, uh, the director of developer experience. And so that's how I got into Remix. That's why I, um, I love it so much. And, um, um, and so, yeah, I wanna tell you a little bit about uh, some of the specific things that make Remix uh, so great. So um, first of all, just as like the standard definition, uh, Remix is a web framework uh, with a focus on web standards and modern web app user experience. Um, and people um, love using Remix sites because they are fast and they are bug-free and they're awesome. So a um, couple of things that I wanna talk about, uh, about Remix specifically um, in just like from the, the website and then we can go into the demo and, and talk about some more of those things. So first of all, we uh, talked already about uh, the loading states and the jankiness and like this, this is all over the web. Like if you go to um, chase.com, look at how many loading spinners you get just on, this is not even authenticated. So like, I don't know what they're even doing here uh, to have four loading spinners on this page and things bouncing around all over the place. But this is a very normal experience for the web. We've just gotten used to the way that this works and it's not good. Um, and like a, a large reason that it, things are this way is because we have these network waterfalls uh, because we want to co-locate our data requirements, but we want also want to code split our uh, code. And so we don't know our data requirements until we're rendering and, and it ends up being this big mess. So um, Remix enables this, uh, has this ability to know all of your data requirements and code requirements just by looking at the URL. And, uh, and because of that, it can prefetch things like crazy. So if we come down here, uh, to take a look at that. As the user is navigating around the site, we already know everything that the, you're going to need if the user goes there. So we can prefetch all of that. And uh, when the user clicks, it's already in the browser's cache. And so uh, we can render it instantly. Uh, and that's 
this is actually really cool the way that we do this because we're using link prefetch tags uh, that are that's web standard. And so um, all of this, the, the data, the CSS, the JavaScript, all of that goes into the browser's cache rather than some in-memory cache that we've implemented ourselves in JavaScript where we have to think about garbage collection and, uh, and the whole cache gets blown away when we close the, the site. If you use the browser cache, then it's all like in the browser's um, own cache where it's managing memory and it can keep that persisted even if the user closes the site. And so the entire experience is a lot better for the user. Um, and, and that's only, we can only really do that at a framework level because we're your compiler uh, or your bundler and your uh, data fetching library and your router. And because we're all those things, we can do this for you um, where you, you couldn't really do that um, on your own. Um, it would just be too much. Um, so those are a couple of really cool things. One other really cool thing I wanna talk about that we're not gonna be able to demo is layout nested routing. So. Lots of frameworks have this idea of nested routing from a file-based standpoint. So you have your pages directory, and that will have, um, in, in this case, you'd have a sales uh, directory, an invoices directory, and then an invoice ID.tsx file. Um, and that uh, invoice ID.tsx file is responsible for the whole page uh, when this particular route is active. Remix is different because that index, that uh, in invoice ID.tsx file is actually only responsible for the part of the UI that um, this URL segment is controlling. And so in this case, the invoice ID only updates this part of the UI. And as you click around to these different invoices, it's only gonna update that part of the UI. And so this is the part when you're working in that file, this is the part that you are going to be uh, working with as far as what gets rendered and what data gets required. Um, for the invoices portion of the URL, that's gonna be responsible for all of this stuff. And it just says, hey, if I have any children routes, then those are going to go in here. So it doesn't actually know anything about the, its children, and its children don't know anything about the parent. And so it actually makes things way easier to maintain in the long term because the status quo with other frameworks is um, because every um, route needs to know or needs to render the entire page. Uh, that means you have to have like shared layout components so that you have the same UI as you navigate across these different pages. Uh, and all of a sudden, that means you also need to pass a bunch of props or those components need to go get their data when they're rendered, which leads to the poor user experience. Um, and, and that's typically what we end up doing because it's a lot easier than having to update props as you make changes to your application like shell um, over time. And so we typically just have a bunch of loading spinners all over the place. It's not a good experience um, and it's very slow. So Remix has uh, layout nested routing that makes it really easy for you to just focus on the part of the UI that you're responsible for and because of that, Remix also is able to know all of the data requirements uh, just by looking at the URL. Uh, and so you get your data uh, requirements co-location along with um, the ability to, uh, to just focus uh, or with the ability for Remix to be able to know what the data requirements are just by looking at the URL. That is a very unique thing that, uh, that Remix offers. Uh, and and it, you feel that a lot as you're using Remix. You feel that benefit a lot. Okay, the, uh, we're gonna talk about uh, data mutations and, and uh, that sort of thing in the demo. So I'm gonna skip past that and talk with the, the last thing I wanna tell you about is error handling, uh, because that's something that we often kind of forget, um, but because of nested routing, it's actually really, really nice in Remix. Um, and so uh, you may be familiar with the idea of error boundaries in React. The way that that works is you uh, basically think of it like a try catch for your JSX, where you have this component in here and that component could render something that blows up. Maybe that happens in, um, you know, you're trying to access some property uh, to render that that doesn't exist or whatever. Uh, and so error boundaries in React are, are cool, but they don't work on the server render. Even with React 18, they don't quite, uh, like you can sort of recover, but um, typically what recovery means is you try to render a header and a footer and a little koala in the middle of the page with the tear running down its face saying, sorry, we messed up. Um, and the user re um, uh, support requests that are gonna be made from that are basically the page is busted. But with uh, Remix and because we have nested routing, we actually make error boundaries work on the server as well as like as you're navigating around the app. And um, because of that, we can make everything contextual. And so each route can have, um, each one of your layout routes or, or your, uh, yeah, your nested routes, each route, route module 
um, can have a error boundary that you uh, say, if there's been an error in loading the data or in uh, making a mutation or, um, or in rendering the component. So it's, it's handling more than just what, what React typically handles. If there's been an error in any of those, then I want you to render this. And, um, and it can be all contextual as well. So uh, rather than just trying to recover from some sort of error, you have no idea what happened. You can actually just say, if there's an error right here, then this is what I want you to render. And so now what your users are reporting to support is that um, when I click on this invoice, it's busted. If I click on these other invoices, then they, it works fine. And so they can use the rest of the app um, it's just the area where like you had some bad data, like there was a bad migration or something um, that, uh, that they'll get the error. Um, so it's some really, really nice error handling that has an actual impact on the business. So, um, oh yeah, and the uh, errors bubble as well. So if you forgot to put an error boundary uh, lower in your uh, nested uh, hierarchy, it will bumble up to the, the closest error boundary um, as well. But don't forget to manage those errors because they're, they're useful. Um, okay, so that's everything that I wanted to talk about um, at a high level, and then we're going to dive into the code with a, a code example uh, here. So uh, we've got the simple app for taking notes. So uh, this is my note, and now we've created that note, and now we can delete that note, and that's that's basically it. That's a, the whole the whole app. <laughs> um, but we're gonna um, I'm, I'm gonna explain to you how this uh, works. We're going to spend quite a bit of time in the network tab as well. Um, so first, let's let's get a look at the uh, code that I had to write to make this experience. So this is a Remix app. Um, you've got a Remix config, and then you've got your app directory here. And inside of the app directory, you have a, a entry.server. So you are responsible for sending a response when a request comes in. So we will actually, as, as Remix, we will handle uh, calling all of the loaders to get all of the data and everything. And that's what goes into this Remix context. But you're the one who's in charge of passing that along to the Remix server component and using uh, the React uh, render to string or render to pipeable something or whatever, whatever the streaming thing is. We, we absolutely support streaming uh, in React 18. That's um, We didn't have to make any changes to Remix to support that because we invert control and just say, you're responsible for that. Um, and then same thing on hydration on the client. You can do the new React 18 hydration uh, hydrate root um, API here as well. And that totally works today. Um, and so because you're responsible for that, you're actually also responsible for everything that happens between the opening HTML and the closing HTML. So I actually, in my app, I control the class name um, based on state um, in my app because I, I can control everything. I render everything on the HTML, which I think is actually kind of cool. Normally uh, I've had to use a use effect if I wanted to, to control something like that. We also have great APIs for uh, the metadata and the links that show up on the page. This is actually how we know how to prefetch the CSS and different things like that as based on what you set in your links function here. Um, so that's, that's pretty cool. And you can do this in any module. So this is our root, but we also, for our login, we have a meta right here that says for the login page, I want the title to be login. Uh, and so uh, it's it's really nice way to control this sort of thing, and you actually also get access to the uh, to the loader data as well. So uh, lots of times the data that you put into the um, meta title or description is going to, or even like the OG um, uh, image and the Twitter image uh, stuff. All of that stuff is going to be controlled by the data on the page, and you have access to all of that um, as part of this meta function here. And actually, in, on my site, if you go to, to talks, you can see I have 67 talks um, about software development. I even have um, how many times I've given these talks, 134 times I've given these talks about these subjects, and that's all coming from the data that um, this page uh, requires. And so having meta that can be managed by the data and doesn't actually require rendering anything, it's actually really nice. Um, and so that is, yeah, that's your quick intro to this. So for this uh, page, we are on the notes route. And so I'm gonna go to the notes file and this is what's going to get rendered uh, for our notes page. So we've got a div, we've got our form, um, and this is gonna be rendered within the outlet right here. 
so that's um, the outlet component. It comes from Remix, which is just re-exported from React Router v6. And uh, this just says, if I have any children, this is where they go. And so that's why um, we see we've got our body. We've got a div and a div. I don't know why I have two divs there. I really should just delete this. We don't need an extra div. So we'll just, oops, we'll just delete that. There we go. So now the outlet's going to go right there. Uh, and so now we just have the one div and now we have our form. And so that's that's nested routing working. Um, you always have your root and then all of the, the routes in here are nested there. And then of course we can go on further um, with uh, uh, multiple segments of the URL and, and nested folder structure and everything. Um, okay, cool. So let's talk a little bit about how this page works. Uh, so you've got your notes page. We've got a couple of hooks that we're using from uh, Remix we'll talk about. Um, but here we're rendering a couple of forms. We're rendering our, our notes right here. We say, if there aren't any notes, we'll say no notes yet. If there are notes, then we'll just, uh, just render all the note display components for that. And the data is coming from uh, our use loader data. And there are a couple of things I want you to notice about this. First, um, there's no loading uh, states or error states managed in here. Like I, I mentioned earlier, the error states uh, will happen um, if there is an error and those are going to render your error boundary. So if I wanted to handle that, I would export an error boundary from this and then I could handle that error there. So you don't have to worry about um, that error state in here. Like normally you're going to say if data.error, then, you know, render or return, you know, whatever you want for your error. You don't have to do that in Remix. You have a separate place for handling errors. Um, there is also a way to manage pending states. And we're not going to get, uh, well, we, we will get into that a little bit. Um, but for like getting this page uh, loaded initially, we've actually got some really cool APIs. Um, if you wanted to show a user a loading spinner right from the get-go, we have really cool APIs for that. Uh, typically, you don't want to do that if you can help it. But um, but yeah, that's there for you if you need, um, or it will be. Um, but uh, we also have a... Um, use transition hook, which we'll talk about here in a little bit for uh, managing pending states as well. So let's take a look at um, how we get the data. So this is our loader. It's in the same file, uh, in the same route module. Every route module can have a loader, and that loader um, can send back the, the data that you need for this page. So uh, first, we're going to require the user ID. And if there is no user ID, we actually redirect uh, the user to the uh, login page. And so that's what happens in here is we get the session out of the request. Um, we get the user ID out of that session. And then um, if, uh, if there is no user ID or it's not a string, there's something weird about it, then we're going to throw a redirect. So this is um, a, a redirect function is something that's part of Remix that basically just makes it easier to do a new response uh, with the headers. Uh, location, login, and then the right status code and all that stuff. Um, so that's that's all that this redirect thing is doing. This throw uh, just allows us to uh, be able to say, hey, Remix, I don't want to run the rest of this fun uh, this yeah function or anything. I want you to handle this response and just send that right away. So that actually makes things really abstractable because I don't have to worry about whether or not there's a user ID. I don't have to say, if there's not a user ID, then uh, return a new you know, redirect or whatever, um, there will always be a user ID. And if there's not, then we already redirected them by now, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, so Remix is really abstractable for that reason. Uh, the next thing that we're doing is we're reading in the database to get the notes. And that's another really cool thing about Remix is um, whether you're uh, doing a client-side transition or a server render, in both cases, when you're going to get the data, you actually are only running on the server so you can talk to the database or you can use a private key to talk to a third party or you can uh, you could even just call downstream to a, a you know whatever uh, HTTP or uh, whatever uh, backend that you're currently using. But the fact is that all of this code only runs on the server so you can do any of that stuff and as like use all the libraries you want, you can hit like 30 different endpoints or whatever. Um, bring it all together and, and take care of the data, like uh, do whatever calculations you need, uh, and then just send the little pieces that you need back to the UI. And so we're able to move a ton of your code onto the server, making things really, really fast. So um, this is really, really impactful. Um, one of the primary motivations for people for using GraphQL 
uh, is so that they uh, don't request more data than they need. Um, but you don't have this problem when you're using Remix because it doesn't matter if you request more data you need because this is all running on the server anyway. And you can just slim down to the pieces that you need. Uh, so it ends up being really, really efficient um, and way faster. You end up sending a lot less uh, code and data to the browser because of this, uh, the, the fact that the loader only runs on the server. So that's huge. That, like, yeah, it, it's a really awesome feature. Um, cool. Uh, and then Remix is managing the, that uh, network for you. And so it's going to be the one calling this loader. Uh, it calls the loader when there's a mutation automatically so that you always have the latest up-to-date stuff. You'll notice one thing that we don't have in here is any code that says, if I create a new uh, note that we need to update our note state or anything. Um, when you're using Remix, React actually feels kind of like just a templating library. It, uh, there's not a whole lot of React features that you're using on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, of course, there are complex components that you write that maybe need to uh, make network requests like um, as the user's typing and stuff. In those situations, yes, you're absolutely going to be using some of uh, React's features, uh, but Remix actually helps you a lot with those too. So um, Remix is the one making sure that the uh, network tab is being taken care of. So you're getting the data that you need and you're mutating the data properly and everything. Uh, it allows you to save yourself a ton of time, a ton of code. And um, we all know that the more code you write, the more chances there are for bugs. And so not having to write a bunch of code for managing loading the data and stuff is a huge win. Uh, okay, so let's talk about mutations now. Um, so here, is our, the first mutation that appears in our uh, on our page, and it is our logout button. Um, logout buttons typically in apps that I've written that are like single page apps and stuff, um, those typically are like, uh, I click on this button um, and I have an on-click handler and I clear out local storage and then redirect the user to the homepage or something like that. Um, in Remix, you could do all of that, um, but the better way to do user authentication is with a cookie. Uh, it's more secure that way. And, uh, and it also is a lot easier and the, the back end actually could server render user specific stuff. If you just do it in local storage, uh, then you can't server render any user specific things. And so we need to actually perform a mutation to make a uh, change to this cookie to uh, tell the um, server, hey, I'm supposed to log out. And so that's why we're using this form. Uh, and since the beginning of the web for a long, long time, uh, forms are how we did mutations. And so Remix, uh, is remixing the old days with the new. And so we have this form component uh, where we're using an action and a method. And so when the user clicks on this logout button, they're going to do a post to logout. And if we go to logout, this has an action. And this action is gonna be responsible for handling that request, which by the way, is a web fetch request. So um, as you're using Remix, um, you're going to be using the fetch API um, and that's what Remix does a lot, actually, is we, instead of building Remix uh, or framework-specific abstractions, we actually turn things around and just hand you the web platform, regardless of what platform you're deploying to. So if you're on Dino, or if you're on Node, or and Express, or if you're on um, some serverless uh, platform, or a V8 isolate with Cloudflare workers, any of those, we normalize all the request response stuff to the web fetch API, uh, so that you can uh, deploy anywhere that you like um, and have the same API, and it's the web. Um, so that's pretty nice. So this request object, we're going to go to the logout, and we'll just say, hey, get me the session out of that request, which really all that's doing is it's uh, using this session storage um, utility that is provided for you by Remix, and uh, you pass the cookie header to it, and then that will get you uh, a way to like interact with that session. And so here we just, we're getting that session and we're saying, hey, session storage, I want you to destroy the session, which all that does is it sets the max uh, um, age to zero um, and the browser will clear that out. That's the way that you get rid of cookies. Uh, fun fact. Um, so that's what this action does. So when you're doing anything other than a get, basically, you're gonna be going into the action. So in this, uh, for creating a new to-do or a, a new note, um, and for just um, deleting a note, we're using a form with a method post for both of those, but they don't have an action like our logout does because we wanna handle those in this module, in this file. And so we have an action right here 
And um, the way that the web works is if you make a mutation, it's going to make that mutation to the current route. Um, and so this route is going to handle that. We're going to get the user ID. We're going to get the form data out of the request, which again, this is a web platform API. So did you know that you can do form data on a request? I didn't, not before Remix. So we can get that form data to get all of the, uh, uh, the data that uh, the user submitted. And based on the type of action that is being performed, whether it's delete note or create note, we do the proper thing. And so this action actually is not a remix thing. This is just the way that the form is set up. The form has an input for typing in the, the title of your note. And uh, the button, the save button, has a name and a value, which is another thing that I learned when I started using remix is that uh, your buttons in a form can have a name and a value, and those will get serialized as part of the form. And so that's how we distinguish between whether we're trying to delete or uh, create is um, by the name and value on uh, the button. And in fact, you can have multiple submit buttons. And this one could say um, update note. And now all of a sudden, if they click on the update button, we're going to know that they're trying to update. So it's a really simple and it's nice and declarative. You don't have to do any serialization of J JSON or use some uh, library to do a fetch request or anything. That's all managed for you by Remix. It, um, yeah, declarative forms are the bee's knees. They're, <laughs> this is awesome. And again, no code in here uh, for saying, oh, we deleted a note. Let's go update our notes or anything. Remix is managing all of that for you. OK, cool. So for the last little bit of time that I have before we get to Q&A, I want to uh, tell you or show you about um, progressive enhancement, um, making iterative changes to uh, the existing code, um, and a little bit about transitions and, and how forms work. Um, and then we can get to some Q&A. So one thing you might have noticed in here is we don't actually have any pending states. Um, and sometimes the user's network is going to be super fast like this, fast. And other times, the user's network is not going to be fast. And uh, if we go with slow 3G, this is slow. And we hit save. We're not getting any uh, feedback of any kind, right? So we need to think about um, how do we um, give the user some feedback uh, so, and show some pending state. So let's say that you are an engineer working on this. And you're like, uh, you know what? I haven't gotten any designs for what the, um, the pending state should look like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just say reload document. And what this does is it basically just says, hey, Remix, don't do event prevent default and don't do any of your on submit. It basically just says on submit handler is uh, nothing. There is no on submit handler for this form. And so it lets the browser do its normal thing. And so with this, if I uh, am on a slow network connection and I say, uh, this is web stuff, we hit save. I'm not getting any pending UI right here, but I am getting pending UI right there. So the browser actually knows how to give the user some feedback based on what they've done. And the browser is also the one responsible for making this post request in the first place. So there was no JavaScript required. In fact, we could even uh, disable the JavaScript. Um, and if we refresh, we'll see we haven't loaded any JavaScript. And I can uh, create a new note. And I hit Save. And the whole thing worked. Because Remix understands what the browser does with, um, uh, with a form. It will do a post. It will have a payload. It serializes the data for us automatically. And so all that Remix is doing is it brings the JavaScript along so that we can make the experience better. But the experience works without the JavaScript. And this is, again, progressive enhancement at work, um, making the experience better with JavaScript, um, not just enabling it with JavaScript. So we're going to keep the JavaScript because we like it. Um, but I think that's an important thing to, to keep in mind is that uh, Remix understands what the browser does. And so if YouTube had used Remix, they wouldn't have had this bug. <laughs> so if any of you know uh, any engineers at, at uh, YouTube, let me know, because I'd love to chat with them about how Remix can help solve their it problems. Um, OK, cool. So let's say that you, uh, as an engineer um, who is building this, um, you just did reload document. Like, it works. It does show a pending state. It's not an excellent user experience, but like, we don't have a pending design yet or something, so we're not going to do anything. Well, let's say now you do have a, a, a design for what the pending state should look like. Uh, you should. Uh, we're going to say this is saving, and we're going to disable the button. And so now what we need to do is find out the is saving state. So if we just say is saving is true, then we're going to say disabled is saving, and the save um, is saving. 
then we'll say saving, otherwise it'll say save. So if we come over here, we can see that's that's the pending UI that we're trying to, to create. And so we just need to know um, when are we in an is saving state because we're not the ones making the network call, that's Remix. And so we don't know when the user submitted and you might think, okay, well, we'll add an on submit handler, or we'll add an on click or something and have a state or whatever. Um, but that is just, there's so many uh, issues with, with managing the stuff that happens over the network, any asynchrony uh, and any state associated with that. Like what happens if the user clicks the button twice or what if they um, you know, click the button and then the network goes down or all like, um, what if the there's race conditions? Like there's so many problems when Remix has thought of all of them and those are all um, managed for you. And so you can use um, this handy little hook called use transition to get the transition because a form submission is actually a transition. Uh, when you click on a uh, submit a form, it's actually going to take you from one place to another. And the only difference between a form submission and a link uh, click is the form submission sends some data along with that and says, hey, I want to go over here and here's some data uh, for you to do that job. Uh, it's kind of like uh, the, the query string uh, on a link, except it's hidden behind uh, on the payload of the post request. So this transition uh, has some information for us. Uh, one is like the location that we're transitioning to, uh, the type and state of tra the transition, and then it also has a submission. So if the transition is happening because of a form re uh, request, then we're going to have a submission object, and this is going to have some stuff on uh, on it for us. And I want to, come on, transition dot submission. There we go. Um, it's going to have the form data. So this is the data that was submitted as part of this uh, transition, if that submission exists at all. And so with the form data, then we can get the action. And if that action is create note, then we know that we're in a saving state. And that's it, we're done. We have a pending state for our saving. Uh, and so that, that action is coming from uh, this button where we say the name is action and the value is create note. And so when we submit that, um, this form data is going to have um, all the properties of our form. So it'll also have the property for the title as well. Uh, but when the action is create note, we know that the um, that we're in a pending state, and so we can show a pending state here. So if I change this to a slow 3G, this is going to be pending, and hit save. Now we've got a nice pending state there. That's better than just a, a spinner in the favicon because it's contextual and stuff. So now we've used JavaScript to enhance the user experience, which is great. Uh, it's uh, better than what we had before. Let's do the same thing for the delete. Uh, so we just copy this and instead of is saving, we'll say is deleting. And uh, for the deleting state, um, the action is going to be delete note. So let's say if the action is delete note, um, but this isn't enough for the deleting um, situation because we've actually got multiple of these on, um, on the same page. All of these will be in a pending state uh, if we leave it at this. So we need to also disambiguate between which note is being deleted. And we know that also from this hidden input field uh, that identifies which note is uh, being submitted, uh, which note is being deleted. So this is the way that you submit um, additional data that you don't want the user to have to type in, uh, is you just have hidden input fields. And that's that's the way that the web has done it for a long time. Uh, those of you who just came out of bootcamp might be kind of like, oh, that's interesting. And those of you who've been doing this for years uh, will know that's just like the way that we've always done it. Um, so we're going to say if the, there's a submission with form data and a note ID that matches the note ID of the one that we're rendering, then we know we're deleting this one. And so we can say uh, disabled is, is deleting and is deleting uh, will render uh, the deleting dot, dot, dot. And so with that, now we can say delete and we get web stuff and deleting. And uh, finally, it goes away when we've got a slow network <laughs> uh, when, it, when it's all finished. So that is um, what's really cool about um, Remix managing your network is that you can just kind of hook into Remix and say, hey, I need to know about the transitions that are going on and I wanna render all of those. Okay, so just two last things. Um, and the, the first is uh, we are modeling this wrong, actually. Um, the, there are two ways to model um, mutations on the web. You have the one way that we, that has been done for like a really long time before JavaScript really became popular, which was um, forms, you click on submit and it does a transition. 
Um, and that's the way that we're modeling this here. As uh, when you submit a form, it transitions you to another page. A good example of this would be uh, on Airbnb, if you're going to list your property and uh, you hit submit, then it's going to transition you to the preview page where you can say publish or whatever. Uh, so that's that's really common. There are a lot of situations where things are that, uh, where it makes sense to do a transition uh, like that. Um, but then there's the other type of mutation that we do now that we have JavaScript and we can do uh, fetching from the browser and stuff. Um, and that is like the Twitter favorite um, button where you can click the favorite heart icon and it will um, you know, show up red and we're not transitioning. That doesn't really make sense. We're not like gonna navigate to the favorite page or something. So um, that is just a fetch request. And with that, um, that, that's more of what we're doing here. We're uh, staying on the same page. We're not going anywhere. We're just staying right here. And we've modeled things like we're navigating around. And so here we're redirecting. We just happen to be redirecting to where we came from. Uh, but this is a redirect and that's not really, it uh, doesn't make sense for what we're um, doing in this particular app. And so I'm going to show you how we can completely change the way that we're modeling this without changing a ton of code and, and the way that we're thinking about it. And this is really profound um, that we can have both of these things, um, these approaches without having uh, to completely think about it differently. So I want you to watch closely at how little I have to change this. So first of all, on the server in the action, I don't want to redirect. Um, I, instead, I'm just going to send a response that says everything was OK. So we're going to return a new response that says, OK, status 200. Actually, I think that's the default. So we'll just say, return a new response. It worked out OK. And then we'll come down here. And instead of using use transition, because we're no longer transitioning, we're going to use something else called a use fetcher, because we actually want to do a fetch. So this is not a transition anymore. This is called our fetcher. We don't have to change anything with the is deleting because the state management and everything is all handled exactly the same. Um, the only thing we have to change now is instead of using a form, which maps to the transition where it'll do a transition, we're actually going to use a, a form that's specific to this fetcher. So we'll say fetcher.form. And that's it. So I changed, instead of redirecting, I just sent a regular response. Instead of use transition, I said use fetcher. And instead of the form, I used the fetcher form. And the whole thing works exactly um, the way that you would expect. It does a fetch request, um, but it's still using the form and it's still managing all of this stuff for you. So you hit delete and I broke something. What did I break? Oh no, is deleting, fetcher. Uh, no, I can't tell you how many times I've done this demo and that has not ever happened. Did I not? Oh, maybe I didn't, because uh, I was on a slow 3G, maybe it didn't refresh properly. Let's try that again. Delete, there we go. <laughs> Something didn't re refresh properly. But anyway, that uh, you don't have to change the way you're thinking about it. You don't have to worry about race conditions or anything. If I go here and we'll say, uh, let's add one, two, and three, and then we'll throttle down to a slow 3G network connection, and I can delete and delete and delete, and all of them get deleted. Um, they're all managed, and Remix takes care of canceling the right requests and, and um, taking care of all the updating of your state and everything. So you don't have to think about any of that stuff, which I just think is so cool. Okay, so the last thing I wanna show you is um, something that we typically don't, don't get to when we're building apps because we're just so busy trying to make things work and ship uh, that we don't think about making the user's experience just like chef's kiss really good. And so what I'm talking about is, um, optimistic UI. Uh, so Twitter has a good example of this. If I say this is a test and we go tweet and then I go to that page and I, here, let's slow down the network. So we're on a slow 3G. If I hit like, then that instantly shows that it's been liked, but it actually hasn't instantly been liked because my network is slow. Um, and so if I go ahead and here, let's unlike it really quick. And then I go over here and hit delete. Now I come back. Oh, it, now it's all messed up. <laughs> but if I try to toggle this state, then it's actually going to say, sorry, that tweet has been deleted. That's not going to work. So what's happening here is even though it hasn't actually finished doing what it's trying to do, um, it shows me that it has finished just to give me more confidence in the platform. Um, and this is being optimistic. So it's optimistic UI. And so it's saying, you know, 99.9% .9 of the time, that favorite is going to work. And so we'll just show that it worked. And then if it didn't, then we'll have to roll back our state and update the UI and show a message or something. 
And this is the, the um, optimistic part is not the hard part. The, the hard part is rolling back um, when your optimism was misplaced. So what I want is to be able to hit delete and delete and have those just go away so that I don't um, have the pending states. We just, we can assume that it's going to work. But for us to see the beauty of how Remix improves the rollback experience, we're going to need to um, make it fail somehow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say um, just a random uh, situation if math.random is less than 0 0.5. Uh, whoops, there we go. Then we'll do that. We'll say error failed to delete note, status 500, something weird happened. This is not something you typically do. But now we can experience, OK, what happens if, uh, if something fails? So then we come back here, and here's how you do optimistic UI with Remix. Watch closely. Um, so if we're in a deleting state, then we no longer want to render this note. So we can say if is deleting, return null. And I'm done. That's it. That's optimistic UI with rollback and everything. So watch what happens here. If I go, let's speed this up so we can create a couple of these. One, two, three, um, four, and five or fove. <laughs> uh, and then if I slow this down so we can watch it happen as it does, we're going to delete, 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 delete. And all of those are being deleted, but some of them are going to fail. And they're going to come back um, and say, hey, um, like we could actually display a message that explains what happened. Uh, in fact, that's pretty easy. Let's just do that really quick. Um, action data, use action data. Oh, actually, sorry, it's, it's going to be on the fetcher. Uh, so the fetcher is going to have this, and we can say uh, fetcher dot data um, dot error, and that that could be ah there we go that could not exist. But if there is uh, data and that data has an error, then we'll uh, render a span with uh, let's see um, yeah sure we'll do that uh, except instead of a class name because I don't think I have anything for that we'll say style um, color red. Cool. There we go. So now if I come back here, let's uh, speed this up, create a couple more. Um, blah, 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 blah. Just a bunch of these. And then we'll slow it down again. And we delete, 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 delete. And some of those are going to fail, uh, as we can see there. And we're going to get the error message uh, shown right there. You probably have a better design than I did, but you get the idea. Like, that is not hard. There's no, like, nothing in here about rolling back or anything. And that's because Remix understands your application and is able to uh, get everything um, up to the right state when everything is all, all said and done. So you don't have to manage any of that. You don't have to worry about rollback. It's amazing. And that is what I wanted to share with you all uh, today. So um, I didn't leave a lot of time for questions. That's my bad. I'm sorry if you had a bunch of questions, but I'm happy to stick around for as long as I'm allowed to, uh, to answer questions. Um, feel free to, to stick those in the chat and I can take a look at them. And while you're thinking of those, I'm going to answer a couple questions that people ask us pretty often. Um, one question is, what about Next.js? We have a very in-depth article about Next.js uh, uh, comparison with Remix. Um, it, yes, it's very in-depth. So uh, don't bother asking that one because I'll just tell you to go to this article. Um, it is great. Another one that we get quite often is React server components and, um, and streaming and stuff. Um, we have streaming support, so you can totally stream uh, with Remix. And there's, it's not even a lot of work. Um, and as far as server components are concerned, those aren't shipped yet, um, but we are looking at them. And uh, with the demos that we have so far, um, it's um, uh, what Remix has right now are better than the demos that they have. Um, so we're waiting for. Uh, it to, first of all, be released, uh, but also improve the user experience. So that's another one we get quite often. Uh, and then another really interesting thing is we're bringing a lot of really cool features from Remix into React Router. And so if you're using React Router, then you're going to get a lot of really cool features. Uh, you'll get like 90% uh, of the DX with 50% of the performance gains. And so you'll probably want to eventually migrate over to Remix. Um, but this is a, a really nice way to iteratively uh, migrate to um, to Remix if you're using React Router. Um, OK, so with that said, happy to take any questions that people have. Um, and I'll just stick around until they kick me out. <laughs>
Yeah, can't I have just one question from the register the registrant pro form? So you I send it to chat. You can take a look if we have All right. three minutes. So yeah. Yeah, what is the size limit of a backend in a remix project? Um, I'm not sure I understand the question. Um, there's not any size limit really. You can build any size application or or any size backend. You could actually use a remix um, in place of a REST API. Um, uh, like you could build a REST API with Remix. Uh, so it could be 100% backend project, uh, no UI, uh, that Remix is totally capable of that with a feature called resource routes. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't think there's any size limit um, of any, to speak of. Cool, any other questions? Okay, well, I'm, um, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate you giving me some time uh, today, and I hope that you all love Remix. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, thank you guys. So I want, I, I also want to add some words. Thank you, Ken, for this really great lecture. Uh, I guess, uh, people who couldn't attend it would also love it and i will send i just want to remind you guys that i will send all the all the materials i saved these lectures i say i saved these links to the articles so i send them as well uh and the last thing that i wanted that Thank you, thank you for this beautiful evening together. I hope uh, to see you soon, to see you on other our events. Uh, once again, thank you for your donation and hope you will have a great evening. Same to you. See you everybody. Yeah, yeah, we can go.